Hello, everybody. For those, Hi. especially those on the replay, because right now we don't have anybody in the on uh, live stream in the chat. But for especially those on the replay, which I do have several people that watch replays. This I do actually consistently have a so, uh, few several people that watch replays. So, yes. um, thank you, Mary at Pittsburgh Artist Studio. Her channel's linked down below in the description box. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for joining again. Um, she um, joins every Tuesday. Joins us on every Tuesday. It's very nice. Yeah, we and, have fun. <laughs> and oh. well, we last time we did the theme of Christmas in July, and uh, we're having a pretty 300, 180 degree theme kind of from Christmas in July. Yeah, it's quite a quite a change here. Yeah, it's kind of pretty much pretty different from Christmas in July is going it's the theme today is meditative art and I know I know the camera never picks up this pencil my pen the pencil drawings and I have to turn it this way because the image is really this way it's a tree of life and um, I've also linked down below uh, the name oh, what's the name of hers I have to look up a name of her channel but it's mute something something um, mindful art muse I believe that mindful art muse is the name of the woman's channel that I this is inspired from because she does a lot of meditative art teaching you about meditative art on her channel and it's a really great channel you should check it out because it she really helped um, it's really great for the prompts she gives and actually the video I watched gave six 15 prompts and with how she approached those prompts in the video how she approached those prompts and and um the prompt i'm actually following two prompts for this growth and transformation and it made me think of a tree and i and i decided oh yeah i'd like to do a tree of life so i've already done it in pencil and i'm gonna right now i'm gonna outline it with black paint but you, you might not be able to see it right now and if you want to learn more about meditative art, you should check out her channel. I'll, I'll be talking throughout the live stream a little bit about what stuff I've learned from her channel about uh, mindful art. She calls it mindful art and it kind of goes into art therapy because she really believes in the meditative mindful art to help to be stress reliever, to really be stress, to, to stress relieve, to really like help you relieve your stress and do the art no pressure no judgment it's a no judgment zone it's no pressure no judgment zone for creating this kind of art anybody can do this and you, you everybody can try this kind of art because it's no judgment it's no pressure and it, and it's all abstract nothing we're not trying to create anything um realistic art and you should definitely check out her channel which which is mindful art um, muse mindful art it's linked down below so so we have Mary uh, following one of the prompts okay so go ahead yes um grace gill is here hi hi grace gill Ed so nice to see. here hi edward smart and grace gill so nice to see you guys oh undell hi undell undell comes to us from norway oh nice i'm not exactly sure what this prompt is prompt is i know that the, she did one for pain and i probably will do that uh also if we have time uh because i kind of like that pain she did one for pain she uh with back wow, pain. oh i didn't see that one yeah and uh it was like in her uh vertebrae and i thought wow that that just hit me but she's a cancer survivor oh really okay. yes she's a cancer survivor and um, I, I just like that kind of round thing that she did. I don't know what that was, but I kind of like that. Just that feel of the mandala. And she started out, I believe, with the watercolor first. So that's what uh, she put some purples and stuff and just kind of worked from the center out. And what's the, what's the pro uh, you're pro following the prompt of pain? Well, I'm I'm gonna do that maybe after I do this one because I want to see how this works on this uh, paper. I um I got another sketchbook here, and this is supposedly handmade paper. Oh, nice! But what's oh. the what's the first prompt you're working on? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the prompt was. Uh, she doesn't remember. Okay. I just, yeah, I just know it started out with a center yellow. 
and then she kind of worked out a little bit and then uh it and then she started like how these bled into each other is how she did the doodles in there but i don't know what prompt that was oh so yes we're following some prompts that were suggested by um what's the name of it it's linked down below it's on um, mindful art muse that's the name of the channel and we were i inspired i was inspired by her on her channel some video a video on her channel a few videos on her channel for the mindful meditative art that she does so uh, if you were here at the beginning i explained a little bit about it i'll, I'll keep talking about it throughout the live stream the meditative mindful art anybody can do it because this is not realistic art it's abstract and it's all about no judgment and no judgment and to reduce stress. Yes. So I'm just going to start out with soft colors, kind of do some and soft colors, see how they work together. And shout out to Edward Smart. He's a channel member and his channel is linked down below in the description box. And his channel is about flight and aviation. And it comes to us from Hawaii. Aloha. <laughs> and her colors were very oh. muted. Her colors were very muted too. Oh, yes, that's true. I'm going to start off with black. I did a pencil drawing. You probably, the camera can never pick it up that good. And now with the black paint, I'm going to outline this whole drawing. And my prompts were growth and transformation, which I created a tree of life. Inspired also by, I looked up tree of trees of life on Pinterest because I, I actually, I, have to, I, I, I just always liked some inspiration and um, there was a bunch of trees of life and I did, so I, I actually, I created a vertical tree of life because so many of them are circular. So I did make the top part circular and, and extended this down and I like this spiral effect that I saw on one of them. And, oh yeah. But you might not be able to see it because the camera often does not pick up um, pencil drawing that good. And I'm going to use a page in one of my journals. I, will, I, I don't know if this is a sketchbook. I haven't done anything in it. Or if I've done stuff in it, I've torn the pages out. And I saw this from somebody else where they have a palette page. So eventually they'll, they don't never waste the paint because they're going to turn their palette page into something. But then uh -huh. I thought, but what if that when they paint on the palette page, what are they using for their palette for when they paint on their palette page? <laughs> Ah, yeah. I should ask that artist sometime. If you guys have questions or please let us know. Mm. Crafty hmm. Crochet is here. Oh, hello. Bible, Bible with Angela and Blind Guy, his wife. Oh my wife. goodness. I got to say hello to these people. Let me see. Oh. I'm going to bring, I, I watch the, I read the, I read the chat on my um iPad. Crafty. Oh, okay. Crochet 
and Bible with Angela. The new is a new. I've never even seen this channel. Hello, but I'm sure she's friends with Froggy when and knitting. Are you friends with Froggy when and knitting? Crafty crochet and blind guy. His wife. Yes, he's a he's a, a new chan He's a new friend that I met over at Kirk Nugent's uh, live stream a few weeks a couple oh, weeks ago. Okay. Yes, hello, blind guy. Blind guy, I got to tell you, um, the first Sunday of every month, I co-host on my channel. You got to come to my channel this Sunday, 12 noon p.m. This Sunday, I co-host the first Sunday of every month, a discussion, live discussion, and we invite everybody, we invite anybody up on the panel and a, a discussion for the YouTube blind community, especially for the YouTube blind community. Oh, wow. So I do. So that's coming up. You just came right in time because it's our next one is this Sunday, 12 noon p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I should I could try to put the link that you could set a reminder and I could try to put a link in the chat. It's going to take me a few minutes. Crafty Crochet, are you friends with Froggy When and Knitting, who's also a member of the YouTube blind community? Okay, I'm going to try to put that link in the chat for this Sunday, the live stream. Hi, the Artful Dabbler. Artful Dabbler is another person from the YouTube blind community. Hello. Oh, nice. Hi. Artful Dabbler comes to us from the UK. Nice. I haven't seen you in a while, Artful Dabbler. Have you been doing, how, how's it going? And have you been doing any artwork? So I don't care for the way that this uh, paper is. So I'm gonna. Oh, use the water you didn't part. gesso it. Pardon me. You didn't. You did not gesso it this time. No, this is like handmade. I didn't know how it would work. Um, but I don't like the way that looks. So I got a piece of watercolor paper. We're gonna try it that way. Oh, it's a different paper. It's handmade paper. Yeah, that's a handmade paper and it just doesn't look too good to me can you just do it now or too late uh probably too late too late okay i'm getting the link for the blind guy for this sunday this sunday this Sunday live stream with a discussion. It's a dis live stream discussion, and we invite anybody up on the panel. Live stream discussion with the YouTube blind community. Okay, so I'm getting there. Okay. Mortgage with me, the artful dobbler. There's a lot of people in here, Diana. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see everybody. It's so nice to see everybody. Hey, mortgage with me. Yes, mortgage with me. Hi. So nice to see you, mortgage with me. I can't believe she comes from the West Coast. Oh, really? Wow. Mm -hmm. Our Sunday, I'm typing it in now. Our Sunday live stream. Our Sunday live stream with the YouTube blind community. This Sunday, um, set your reminder now. It's for this Sunday, twelve noon, right on my channel, 12 noon p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This Sunday. There you go. Put it in the chat. If um, let's see, let's see. She answered the question. She's an art artful dabblers in Ireland. I was in hospital. Oh, you were in the hospital for a while. Uh oh. Home oh no. Hope home now. Waiting for. 
my studio to be finished. Oh, we're having a studio built. That's so wonderful. How oh, nice. What a, oh, that's awesome having a studio built. You're not kidding. Wow. That's like everybody's art dream, you know? Yeah, what a wonderful thing to look forward to. Blind light, blind guy. I just, it, um, if you click on that link, you can set a reminder because notifications don't always go out that good. And people, a lot of times, people don't get notifications or can't see, don't notice their notifications, or, or YouTube doesn't always put them out right. So if you set a reminder, then if you click on that link and set a reminder, then set a reminder, then, um, then you're sh pretty sure to, you will pretty, they will definitely put the live stream on your home page. But thank you. That hope to see you there this Sunday. We're we we're working on mindful meditative art today, inspired by the channel. That's linked in below, link down below in the description box. Mindful art muse. And I'm, I'm following the prompts of transformation and growth, and I'm painting a tree of light. And Mary says, actually, she can't remember the prompt she's following, but. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just a reflection of, of stuff. I mean, it's just. Wait, if I read you the list, could you remember? I think it was that. It was, go ahead, go ahead, read the list. All right, let me read the list. We yeah. have a list of 15 prompts that we chose from. I should find that video. Miles. Okay, drawing, drawing the breath meditation exercise. Uh, number two, where do you feel stuck? Welcome back to Big. Number three, where do you get your strength? Number four, growth. Number five, treasure. Number six, possibilities. Number seven, what are your values? These are all art prompts, everybody. Art journal prompts. Okay. Yeah, let's see here. She did. She oh, I will. Oh, I have a few more. Hold on. Number, number eight. Medi I think I missed number seven, but number eight. Meditative. Oh, this is probably what you're doing. The meditative watercolor doodling exercise. That's it. That's the one. Yeah, that's it. The water. Yeah. Uh, okay, medicate. Medi she's doing meditative watercolor doodling exercise. Yeah, because I wanted to doodle on this. Um, the thing about this is you let the wa uh, watercolor spread out and then kind of like put the lines in after it dries in. Yeah. Uh, and just make doodles. And I, I thought that was pretty cool because I, I do like to doodle. And do you like Zentangle? Um, yeah. Yeah. I've done that occasionally too. And that's fun. Yes, doodling and Zentangle have been scientifically proven to reduce stress. Yes. Because one of my very first videos five and a half years ago, because I've been on YouTube for five and a half years, one of my very first videos was uh, the bet teaching people how to do Zentangle and where it came from and its origins, and then what are the benefits? What are the benefits? Oh, okay. Uh, actually, there's a uh, there's well, psychological or benefits for um, Zentangle. So it it does help to relieve stress. Yes, scientific proof. Uh, scientific proof shows. I mean, yeah, I think they've studied people, and and it's it's That's been proven good. to reduce stress, definitely. Yeah. 
That's and a lot of people like coloring in adult coloring books, and probably that reduces stress, too. Yeah, yeah. Now, that's something I'm not really into. Um, yeah, me neither. I like to make my own line drawing, and then and then I do like the coloring part of that. Right, right. But I feel like if I just do it, if I just color adult coloring books, I'm like, well, what was that for? For me, as an artist, like, I don't know where that got me. That yeah, I mean, it might be relaxing, you know, um, to be able to create something like that. But yeah, for me, like I, I'm like you, I would rather create my own, my own art. So many paintbrushes. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I have the I have them all in a container. My the ones I use the most, and there's yeah. a bunch of them. It must be like I don't know, there's 25 or more of them. And then in a bag on the floor in a Ziploc bag, there, it's an open Ziploc bag. About 50 more. Oh wow! Well, um, I think I just kept them over the years. I I, I never throw away brushes. And I'm not hard on my brushes either. Yeah, um, I have brushes, different brushes for different things. Yeah. You know, like you have your oil get painting brush. So I have like various containers for everything. Okay, so. Yeah, I have not done oil in a long time and I lost my oil paints. I don't know where they are. They're somewhere in deep in deep storage oh really yeah and i lost my oil paint i don't know where they are and, uh, so oh and i don't have the ventilation right now for doing them plus i don't even have ventilation for my um alcohol ink paint i can't oh, yeah. do that in extreme weathers i have it has to be in weather it has to be either warm or cool but not extremely hot or extremely cold because right. i have to open the window for it yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't breathe that. Oh, it gives me a headache. Yeah, it gives a severe headache. If I if I had I tried it before with no window open and I got a really bad headache. Really? Oh. Mm. Yeah, that's. I have, and so I only do it half the year, and then I forget how to do alcohol ink painting, and I and I watch my own videos on how to do it. <laughs> oh yeah, you know what? You do it differently because I just do like the little dots and then do some tangles around it yeah yeah i've learned a bunch of different techniques from because i've taken on i've taken online classes for alcohol ink, alcohol ink painting yeah i have to find some i know that I, well i'm in that skillshare stuff if you need to know somebody i know a good i know a good alcohol ink painting teacher oh okay if you wanted to know yeah She's on Thinkific. She's not on Skillshare. Unless maybe she might have gone on Skillshare. I don't know. Do you have to um, only be on Skillshare? No. Um, this, no, I just, I pay for those classes, you know, like for a year. I've learned a lot. I mean, there's so many things. I, you just can't imagine. You pay, you pay like a yearly membership and then you can have access to all kinds of classes? Yeah. There's oh. so many. And like, I'll never get through with them all. Uh, there's just so many, but they're so interesting. I mean, there's some teachers you just, you know, they're okay, but they're not great. Yeah, yeah. And then there's some that are so good that, you know, you just want to, like, take every class that they, they have, you know. I got to see where Little Grumpy is because I hear him out here doing goofy. Stuff. Little Grumpy is her new puppy. Yeah, my little doggy. That she adopted from Puerto Rico. Yeah, I um, I had to take him to the vet today. Oh, how'd that go? Well, it, uh, he has a respiratory infection. Yeah. Now, he was treated for that there, but she said that uh, a lot of times, like, you have to treat them several times before they actually get over all that. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, so I'm just hoping I have to take him back in two weeks to have them take another x-ray of his his lungs 
but otherwise he's in pretty good condition considering he was uh, abandoned and probably you know had some issues with mistreatment he yeah. was abandoned he was chained and abandoned and somebody rescued him he was in a veterinary hospital since april and then he just came up here they were waiting to transport him because they won't transport him uh on an airplane if the temperature if it's too hot yeah so have to wait for a day that's not real hot but uh, he, he's, he's cute. He's a little frisky and he wants to take over on Sally, you know, because he's a male. <laughs> you know how that is. Um, yeah. But he's, uh, he's neutered and everything. So, I mean, there's no problem with that. It's just that he wants, he wants the attention right now. So. And Sally gets jealous. Uh, Sally doesn't know what to do because Sally's laid back. She's not a, uh, you know, aggressive dog. She, you know, he'll like push her out of the way. It's, it's goofy. You know, he'll just push her right out of the way with his back end. It's, um, but they're, they're getting better together. That's good. They're getting better. Yeah. And, uh, the, um, uh, vet said that it'll take some time but you know you've i've only had him like for a week now so only a week wow yeah, it was a week on sunday <clears throat> so we're going on our second week with grumpy he's, he's, he's a how ball. did he get from puerto rico to here a rescue well, organization uh, they brought him over yeah he flew into miami and then from miami they drove him up uh, through a nonprofit organization that does this, because apparently in Puerto Rico, hi Shawana, how are you? Hi Shawana, nice. Thank you for coming to the live stream. Apparently, a lot of dogs get abused there. What about Miami? He couldn't stay there in Florida. Uh, well, I guess with this organization, they bring him up here. You know. Uh, through this I, I can't it's called altos or something or satos it's called satos and um they rescue the dogs from there they work with vet vets down there uh i actually talked to some of the vets there um to find out a little bit more about about him and you know to find out exactly what was going on with him and stuff because when he developed the cough and then he was, uh, he couldn't keep his food down. I was a little worried about that because I thought, what the heck, you know, well, here it turns out like he, our food is a little different, you know, yeah. and with that respiratory infection, he couldn't keep it down. So I had to give him Pepto-Bismol. I had to cook him chicken and rice and just give a little bit of that to him at a time. Oh, Okay. Yeah, I mean, it was just like taking care of an infant when they get sick or, you know, like a, a, a yes. toddler yeah, that has the flu. Exactly, yeah. So I'm just waiting for this to dry so that I can do my doodlings on here. Maybe what I'll do is get another piece of paper and I'll do my uh, pain thing because I really like that one too. Let's just shake and Shawana, how's your weather? Are you having a hot weather? We are complaining about our heat wave. I, uh, well, very hot. I'm we're in the 90s here. So, and Mary said it's very hot, even though she's only she's in the upper 80s. How's your weather, everybody? Yeah, it's 87 right now here. Well, we went up to 93 today, so I don't know about. Wow, that's I have hot. to look. I have to check. I have to check my phone, the, the weather app. And I have to go get water. Hold on, I have to get water. I mean, oh, water for my brushes. I like that. And last Thank week, you. you were having issues with uh, the weather and trees falling. Oh, God. That, that happened. That happened with. That happened last Wednesday. We had a bad storm. That actually, they spotted a twister. A, a twister was spotted. So a tornado came through here and broke trees right in half. So, oh. We have three or four very old trees that have, were downed on our property. One just one caved in the roof of one of our sheds, and and we and we spent 
clean two days we spent on cleaning up and, and we're gonna hire somebody to take care of the rest of the trees that's just terrible that's a shame well it's the first time that's happened in the 20 years my husband's been in this house i've been in this house 10 years he's been in here 20 years and then we have neighbors that have been in this area, been in this neighborhood for 25 years, and they never seen anything so bad. So, and storms usually just don't come our way; they like stay in the distance and go around us. So I guess we're due for it. Oh, yeah, I guess you know, like and we have tons of trees. There's like tons of trees around, so you're bound to get like tree damage. Yes. Luckily, it hasn't happened more often. I'm very grateful it's never happened more often. I'll be right back. I got to go. Okay. Oh, 91. Oh, 84. Well, you got it nice, Ed. You've got it really nice. I think I was telling you my cousin lives out there. He's a musician. He also does websites and stuff. I'm back. Hello. <laughs> Is anybody there? I didn't know if you get called away by your phone, like your daughter, your children. Oh, well, that'll probably happen eventually, too. Well, my one, my oldest daughter is uh, in a parade. She's a councilwoman um, in Pleasant Hills, it's called. So okay. they, they have that um, national night out. It's like to honor police men and all those kinds of people like uh, firemen emergency you know oh uh, so the, the parade like is honoring of them yeah so she's she's like because she's a councilwoman she's, she's a gonna councilwoman be that's her full-time job she's a councilwoman oh no she works she works oh she's she a councilwoman for like the, the count for what the county no it's for uh, pleasant hills borough so oh, does she like politics? Well, uh, she wanted to see what it was like. I think she enjoys it. I don't know that she's going to run next time, though, because her boys are getting older now, and she's a little more concerned about their, you know, being home and things like that. Um, the boys are involved a lot in soccer, but it's just hard, like, doing the soccer, doing the meetings and all the other stuff that goes with it. So she's got a couple years yet. Oh. Yeah. oh hi um scratch and pee if you're still here hi scratch and pee nice to see you oh and blind guy said good night okay oh we're leaving already. oh no i mean oh i'm sorry he said good night to the artful dabbler because she's five hours ahead oh really oh well, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised she she went and undell is in norway and i'm it's her bedtime too i'm sure oh wow yeah ed is well he's six hours behind us he's still at work right ed's still at work oh yeah well as far i think it's five five he's five hours behind us in, in hawaii yeah Edward smart yes
So Shawana, Shawana, do you, are you on TikTok? She was asking Edward if he is. If I just recently got on TikTok maybe a, a month ago. So, and it was weird, like, because all these people recently got on TikTok a month ago. Um, Be Amazing Sylvia did. She joined oh, yeah. TikTok recently. And some of the other people joined TikTok recently. And I'm like, oh, that's weird, because I just joined TikTok recently. Because I thought you had to pay money. It kept. I was trying to join a certain way. I mean, from their web, from, from Googling them. And then they asked me for my credit card. And I'm like, why do I have to get my credit card to join TikTok? And it happened a few times. I'm like, I guess, never mind. I'm not going to try to join TikTok. But then somebody told me, no, you don't. And then you don't have to pay money to join TikTok. And then I, I, then I just entered it through the app store. And then sure enough, I didn't, I didn't have to give them my credit card. Uh, okay. as, long as, you, as long as you try to join TikTok through the app store. And then I don't know. So well, fun, um, but I can't keep up with it too much, but yeah, I don't, I've joined it, but I don't, I'll have to look you up, but I, I don't do anything on it. Uh, yeah. I haven't done anything yet. And then I did a duet video with Sylvia. I never knew. I just learned what duet is where, so she's dancing and then I dance. I, you hit this, you hit the button called duet and then it shows us dancing together. Oh yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> Yeah, I did two du two duets with her. Oh, that's nice. It yeah, won't right show now. up on her channel. It shows up on my channel. Oh, nice. Which yeah, is, I can't do anything like that right now. That's I say, you know, like once I get myself together, um, yeah. hopefully. Yes. Uh, oh, blind guy's still here. He says, I still have not joined TikTok thinking i'm trying to manage youtube oh yeah i understand that i've been on youtube for five and a half years and just only in the past month joined tiktok because i well i couldn't actually i thought it, i kept get trying to join tiktok the wrong way and they kept wanting my credit card so yeah it, i know already youtube is a handful already you don't you don't need tiktok really but oh i know a youtube expert um dean nimmin who has like a hundred and his brother is nick nimmin they're they're very um they're oh, very good God. youtube experts and he said that he knows a few people that could not do well on youtube but they did very well on tiktok so you oh. can do much different like you might not do as well so i was trying to give it a chance to see what would happen and then they ended up bringing over their TikTok audience and then ended up being doing being able to do well on youtube but so far you get a lot of views like i get more views than i would ever on ever on youtube like getting views on youtube's hard but TikTok views like, like i'll get a few hundred like it's not that hard right. oh wow so followers that i'm not getting a lot of followers that that seems to be hard yeah well, um, I uh, like the animal ones, like the birds. Oh, the hawks, yeah, my husband does too. He loves the, he, well, he's not on TikTok, but he watches the animal ones on um, Instagram. Yeah, they're funny. They're funny. Well, let's see. I think maybe this is uh, pretty close to dry. I don't know if we can work on it, we'll see. So my next step is painting this and we're doing meditative mindful art inspired by mindful art muse and i linked her channel down below she inspired this and in case you're interested about meditative mindful art which is really no judgment you know you don't need you don't even need art skills to do this and and you can create very nice art and you should check out her channel mindful art muse on um, link down below in the description box for learning more about meditative mindful art for yes. stress relief and no judgment it's no judgment art yes mm -hmm. so anyone could probably do this without a problem it's just you follow your whatever lines there are which is kind of neat I 
guess I'm going to do... I started off with black acrylic, but I think I'm going to add watercolor on this. I'm going to get closer to what I'm doing so you can see what I'm doing here. And I've un I understand these are Japanese watercolors, and I understand that oh. they're more like they're more like um, gouache. They're they're more like gouache than watercolor. They're kind of gouache slash watercolor kind of thing. Oh, what uh, are they koi? Because I got koi. No, yeah, they're like gansai. Oh, okay. I don't think if if, that, if that's what they call these, I, I think I do not own real. And then I own like children's kind of watercolors. So I do not own like any really good quality watercolors. Like maybe in the future I might might get them. Yeah, I haven't uh, bought really good ones. I, I, I do have them in the tube. I kind of like these pan ones though. They seem to be nice, you know, to work with. I guess it de it depends on the pigment of them. <clears throat> the one I would want to get is Daniel Smith. Um, they they actually crush, made out of crushed, crushed press uh, semi precious st stones to make them. Oh really? Wow. Or maybe that's just some of them. It, oh yeah, the Daniel Smith are. I I think they're the most expensive. I think they're the most expensive, but. Wow. I don't know if they consider them like even the highest quality. Uh huh. But I like how they make them out of crushed, semi precious stone. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not one for the watercolors that much. You know, I uh, something like this isn't too bad, but I'm not a watercolorist. I tried that. I think my my real niche is the acrylics. Yeah. I tried everything. You know, I can do some pastel work. It's not exceptional. Like there's that Monet Cafe. She's so good. I watch her and I think, wow. I never heard of that channel. Yeah, Monet Cafe. She mm -hmm. uh, her name Was is that watercolor. Baker. No pastel. Uh, like she, she, her name is Susan Jenkins. Yeah, I haven't heard of that. Yeah, she really does nice work. Her forte is the soft chalk pastels or oil? Uh, so, the chalk. chalk I love soft pastels. And then she probably uses pan pastels, right? Well, she, uh, I haven't seen her use those yet. Wow, I thought anybody... I thought people don't use the soft chalk pastels that much because I love those and... I've never invested in the pan pastels yet. And I was like thinking, like, I never hardly ever see anybody use soft chalk pastels because I love them. Oh, yeah, me and too. And then I'm thinking anybody that really loves soft chalk pastels, they probably just they probably just use pan pastels. So that's right. interesting. That's interesting that Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, she uh she's really uh good. I've seen some now I do have both kind. I don't have a big uh qual quantity of the uh, pan pastels. I still have yet to use them. I kind of gave up on pastel because um, I was concerned uh, a couple people that I know are new, mm -hmm. I should say, died and they had cancer. And I think that if you don't have a good ventilation system with that, because that's another one that's strong. Yeah, because of the powder, right? Yeah. And uh, the cadmiums are real cadmium and you know so they're like really they can be very dangerous really yeah the you have the real cadmium oh good yeah oh i should be i guess i should be careful with that yeah i mean if there's like uh you know a lot of those softer pastels uh, i would think are more more susceptible 
because of the dust. Oh yeah, definitely. I didn't know that the, the cadmiums were like real cadmiums. Oh yeah. yeah. And they don't even have names on them. The ones I have, they don't have names, names uh, for the collars. They, they just have numbers. Nothing. I, I have to look again, but I don't even think they have numbers. Oh yeah. Well, <clears throat> certain pastels I don't think do. Like, um, what, oh, what the heck is the name of those ones that I got? Uh, Sen, Sen, whatever. Sen oh, Samuel, yeah. Oh, yeah, Samuel, yeah. Oh, that, yeah. Those I ones. Know. Yeah. If you get the half sticks, I mean, you don't know what colors they are, you know? You just go by the, <sighs> yeah, the little thing that they give you, I guess. Oops, no judgment or not at I don't know what the rest of his sentence said. You're reading the chat? Yeah, it was like no judgment at is appreciated. My stick man will get some love. That's right. <laughs> Who said that? The blind guy. His life. Their life. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you got no, you gotta go to that. You got to go to that um that I linked down below that channel, which is called Mindful Art Muse, and you will see you, you you just can do colors and lines and colors, lines and shapes. Art can be just colors, lines and shapes. You guys, you don't need to do realism. You don't have to do realism or stick people. Colors, lines and shapes. Very minimal. Look at this. This is colors, lines and shapes. Like what I just did, colors, lines, and shapes. Me too. Look at my shapes coming out of this. Look at you this. guys. You do not have to do realism to be to do art. That's right. And if you go to that channel, she she'll teach you about she'll teach you about that. Um, well, it's mindful art, meditative, and she really. And she is purely abstract, mindful, meditative art. She teaches you how to reduce stress through mindful, meditative art. And it's totally nothing is realistic at all. It's all colors, lines, and shapes with very simple materials. She's a minimalist. She loves just working like with an ink pen, an ink pen, and some watercolor. That's all she loves using is watercolor and ink pen. <laughs> and it's fun. It's, I just like to dance and and comedy. Shawana says she just likes to dance and comedy. Oh, wow. you're talking about on TikTok. On TikTok. Yeah. She just likes to dance and do comedy. Yeah, that's I, I started an art channel over there, but I did do some dancing. I did a duets with Sil Be Amazing Sylvia. Shawana, yeah, with Be Amazing Sylvia. I did two duet videos with her of dancing. That's cute. I'll be careful with the soft pastels now. Mm. Yeah, yeah, just uh, ventilation. You know, I don't even know how ventilation would help because they come, they'll go right up into your nose, yeah, right? You know, just wear a mask. A lot of people. Oh, wear a mask. mask. That's it. Yeah, um, there they do have like vacuum things that like suck that out of the air and stuff. But I think a mask would be fine. Yeah, because they're particulates that right that a mask would block right and then i have a friend who's an oil painter and she swears that the oil paints, she does not use solvents. I don't know what she uses. She does not use solvents. And she says, 
she says sadly she goes most people don't understand that acrylic paints are harmful they're toxic oh. In, oh. in the drying there's the formaldehyde in the drying oh. and i'm like she goes nobody takes the time to read the small print but she's the only one saying that i don't see that supported anywhere else in any kind of literature yeah i they always say that they're the most yeah or watercolor no watercolor really is the most well, watercolor yeah watercolor is really or drawing mediums right probably. That is quite interesting. And that you shouldn't get it all over your hands either. Well, yeah, you always, uh, it's always good to wear gloves uh, with especially pastel mm. to keep that from. I do it. I mm. always use gloves with gloves with my alcohol ink painting, but I never thought about it. I had not, I had not been so concerned about that with watercolor or acrylic painting. Yeah. Yeah, I I never did either. Mm. Well, you know, um, well, you know that oil paint that can be harmful. Then they have the water uh, soluble. Oil. Yes, the water soluble oil paint. Yeah, so that's supposed to be a lot easier on your health too. Yeah, I, I would think so. Yeah, I knew a lady who uh, had cancer, and she started using the. Um, uh, water soluble ones and they're just like um, regular acrylic well oils you know they do the same oh, they bl like you can blend them they have a longer period time for blending I uh, you can yes um they they don't dry as fast as acrylic yeah you also get something that like retards the drying time too oh yeah with acrylics you can too i have a whole jar of retarder for um slow dry slow dry for yeah. my acrylic that i i don't know if i'll ever use it up yes oh my Yeah, this is uh this is very um relaxing. Yeah. And then you get something cool out of it. I think she did something that like twisted. The, the chat got quiet. Yeah, it did. Is everybody still here? How many? Was everybody went to go eat dinner. Oh, uh, maybe. Did anybody give a thumbs up or? Oh yeah, th there's a bunch of thumbs up. Oh, that's good. Yeah, this is very peaceful. Mm -hmm. I could use this today. <laughs> A little hairy. Hairy? Hairy, yeah. A lot of craziness going on. Uh, <laughs> with the dog and, you know, my daughter with her job. Uh, I know I never liked my jobs either, but yeah. the thing is, like, you know, like training, I never had training. I had to learn everything on my own, especially in the gas industry. Well, I tell you, you know what? Training. So I I felt like I'm self-taught. I had to I had to keep taking watching so many other teacher videos. I'm trained, but they, you know what? They didn't teach you how to they had no classes on classroom management. You yeah. had to learn classroom management. There was no class course in classroom management and you had to learn that 
like in student student teaching and student teaching she gave me some big she gave me some really good pointers that i i kept with the rest of my life but most i had to keep learning i had to keep learning and watch what other like watch videos of what other art teachers were doing and get art teaching ideas all yeah. along the way it's like my my thing did not set me up like oh i'm done i'm done learning i'm done learning like yeah like i learned some things but i had to keep learning to keep teaching right right exactly i mean i think that that's that's the thing i mean and well the bad part about it is they hired her and everybody's out of the office because of the COVID. She's the only one there. So if she has any issues or needs help with anything. And what's her job? Uh, she's an administrative assistant and it's a pit. And a she does, she's, she's so afraid to ask somebody to help her. You know, I said, Natalie, you have to ask mm -hmm. if somebody's there, ask them. Yeah. Because you know, that's the only way you'll find out. When I worked, the boss that I had, I think I told you about that. Did I ever tell you about that? The karma? Um, the boss that I had, when I was getting, like, you know, they had a little bit of training, not anything deep. Mm -hmm. And I was, I love to write letters and things like that, you know, like when I got out of college. And some of these things required letters that we were do, would do so he says uh you know he says you're gonna be working with charlie manson <laughs> he's charlie manson well, his name was a charlie. Killer. yeah it, it was a different name but they they called him charlie manson yeah so for, that for just what reason? Him, yeah because he's crazy <laughs> he was crazy so I'm writing these beautiful letters, you know, and he says, uh, well, he's not going to like that. And I said, well, maybe he'll change thinking that what I was doing was great, you know? Yeah. Well, he was a real nut. He would get so upset with you and he would write, you know, nasty words on your paper in red. I mean, he'd always drop the F-bomb on your papers. Like you would draw something and if he didn't like something, how did I know what the heck was out there? You know, I didn't know. I was just following what the um, supervisors would draw. And then we had to, like, draw the pipeline and, and everything as to how it was laid out. Well, if I didn't see how it was laid out, how do I know that what they're doing is wrong, you know? So it was it was awful. I mean, it, it probably was my worst experience because, like I said, I was sexually harassed there and everything. But anyways, um, he would treat everybody like that. So I wasn't like the only one, you know, that he would pick on or anything. Everybody got treated crazily. So yeah. he finally both, both men and women or just the women? Men and women. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, he'd throw stuff at you, you know. He, and he was the boss? He was the boss. <laughs> he was the boss. And, um, you know, you only hear these. There was no boss over him? There was a boss over him, but everybody was afraid. Everybody was afraid of him. So, because he was crazy. I mean, you know, he, he would, I mean, he was told so many times that, you know, like if he continued to do that, he would get fired and everything else. Well, pfft, it never happened. He actually, uh, another utility company took over that part of the uh, company that, I had worked in and a lot of people got fired or, you know, were eliminated. Well, they were eliminated and he was one of them. I had been eliminated years earlier, but um, he had just retired. He was working for another company. He had just retired. And my daughter, she says, oh, this kid down the street, this guy down the street, you know, his dad just passed away. Uh, he just retired. And he said, she said, and he was outside and the wind was blowing and a tree branch fell down on him and killed him. And I said, oh, that's awful. That's just terrible, you know, to have be mm -hmm. retired finally and then something like that happened. Yeah. She sends me the obituary. It and turned out it was Charlie Manson? Huh? It was Charlie Manson. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's karma, right? Yeah. Well, that's what I said. You don't treat people like that. 
I don't care who they are. You're no, I guess he had to learn the hard way, as every most people do. We all have to. Many times we have to always learn the hard way. Exactly, exactly. And you know, like I did, I did feel bad that that happened to him because nobody deserves to die that way. But yeah. in a way that it just kind of like made me feel well. You know, he caused a lot of pain for people. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, I mean, I, I'd come out of there sometimes in his office and I'd cry. He would he would yell at me, you know, for no good reason. And then um, he would never give me a good review. So I thought, I'm reporting this because I know I'm not that bad. Yeah. You know, I was doing my job. I was doing what I was supposed to do. I was doing my the best I could. And so I was going to report him. And then they told me, no, don't report him. So they were afraid of him. Uh because I promised. What, did you have a union? No, because I was like in management. Uh -huh. A lot of times management have unions. Yeah. Oh, we, oh yeah. They, well, they have their own. Well, it depends. I don't have it. Yeah. Um, the um, the uh, guys that would go out, you know, they were under a union. But, yeah. Oh, in the, in the school world, um, even management, they have their own union. Oh, okay. Yeah, we didn't have one. Oh, okay. And unfortunately, you know, they could just treat us however they wanted. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, well, I I, I really, oh, you know, I look back at that and I still don't know how I survived it. And you, you, you did that for decades, many years? Uh, it was eight years total. Eight? Mm -hmm. uh. Yeah, eight years. But mm -hmm. at that part, I only did six uh, because... You know, like I had taken all these notes about everything that was happening to me. And mm -hmm. I went to HR and HR wanted me to approach all these people, get up in front of them and tell them how I felt. Which, Why? Why? What's the purpose of that? Well, yeah, that's what I wanted to know. You know, I there was no way I was going to do that because it was only going to make things worse yeah. for me. And um, yeah, so I... I came home that day. I was crying and I said, I'm going to quit this job because I don't, I can't do that. Well, then they put me in another position and I was in that position for two years and they eliminated my job. Oh, and that position was pretty good. Uh, it was, it was nice, but I didn't have anything to do because the boss I had was a jerk and he wouldn't give me any work. So <laughs> it was like I was in a marketing department. Um, and what I did do, I liked, you know, but yeah, he just, he couldn't, he couldn't figure out how to promote that department. So eventually it all fell apart. And Edward Smart says he's listening and laughing, LOL. Uh, I don't well, know if well, Marty's tell you, laughing. He said this a while funny. ago. He put that in a while ago, so I didn't yeah. know if Marty's laughing at it. It wasn't funny, Ed, because... Unless you're, you realize you're being sexually harassed by everybody, you know, people. Um, I don't know you know, what party he was laughing at. He put that in a while ago. Yeah. Well, about Charlie Manson, I think he was laughing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, he really was goofy. And he yelled at you about the stupidest things. You know, like things that were important. But he, he, he'd yell at you for something dumb. He yelled at me one day in front of all these people about a, a fire extinguisher because I was in charge of the fire extinguishers uh, that I didn't take care of it, but I had already taken care of it because uh, it had been, you know, uh, dispensed. So I, I had taken care of it to get it refilled and everything. And he's yelling at me because I didn't do it. I said, what are you talking about? I said, I just, I just, they just refilled it. Oh, so I mean it. This it was nuts. There, was nuts. we had not. We had things that we were nuts too. But we could report things to the. We could report things to the union. That didn't always resolve things. Or if it or it did resolve things, it took forever. It could take forever to resolve something. Yeah. Or it. Or maybe it never did. But 
many times the union ha had were helpful. I'm glad we did have a union. We had a very strong union when it came to like we were the last school district. We were one of the last, I think, the last or one of the very almost second to last, third to last, or the, the last school district because our union was so strong to ever have to to ever have to contribute um, towards our health insurance. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, our union was strong. They t they said our union was strong. That they fought that for a long time, for the longest time, that we would never have to have to contribute anything to health insurance, and that the employer would cover it completely. Uh -huh. And we were the one of the last school districts that would ever. And I was almost on my way out before that. Like in my, my that happened in my last two or three years that I was in there. That probably. Oh yeah. And by that. Oh yeah. And, and then I was had a, and then. Anyway, I didn't have to deal with that because I was um, I had opted I had opted out of my health insurance to be on my husband's and, and then you get you get reimbursed a certain amount of money for oh, that. Yeah, 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 that turned out good. So I never actually I didn't have to deal with that. So the time that I was on that insurance, I was never having to pay that. Um, but that's an example of how our insurance was like really good. I mean, not yeah. insurance. I mean, that's an example of how our union was strong like that. Yeah, that was that's nice. If you can be in a union, it's so nice because they do mm -hmm. protect, you know. One time I was out, though, uh, one of the union guys, um, this guy that was always getting the overtime because his boss just thought he should have it all the time. And all these other guys that were in the group, because uh, there was like about seven people that you supervised, uh, all the other guys that were in the group were never getting overtime. So I knew this guy had a lot of overtime at, at, at that week that I was filling in and as a supervisor. So I had called out another, uh, another crew and there was like gas, I guess, gas in, against the building. And there were some things that were a little scary. So anyways, um, I get these guys down there and we're, 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 uh, we're working it to find the, what the problem was. And this guy comes down there in the company vehicle to start to yell at me because I called those guys out. Well, <laughs> this guy was like seven feet tall, you know, and I'm here, this five foot person, he's yelling and pointing his finger at me and yelling at me and screaming at me because I didn't call him out. And I got really mad. I says, look, I said, I called him out because you already had overtime this week. I said, if you want to take this up, let's meet in the manager's office tomorrow morning. So we did. And I had to do a write up, uh, you know, like, because he came, he came, he came to that job site when he should have been back at the office. So, oh. yeah, he, he, he only got like a write-up uh he didn't get anything else but he did get a write-up because because he talked to me that way but i figured you know what you don't you don't come down to a job site when it isn't even your job to to, to ream out the manager <laughs> the supervisor you were, you were a supervisor or a manager what? well yeah i was the supervisor like we would feel i as a i was considered a technical fieldman so I would draw the pipeline installations and stuff. And it was like a draftman, draftsman job. Plus I would like figure out like how much pipeline was going to be in a job, how many elbows were going to be in a job, how oh, much yeah, landscaping wow. was involved, how much concrete was involved. Uh, so I had to figure out all that stuff, you know, the yeah. and everything. And because, I mean, I don't think I ever got it right because nobody ever told me how to do it, but. Uh, I did my yeah. best, but, uh, yeah. So like, I would always have to fill in when one of these people would go on vacation, you know, like the supervisors would go on vacation and I yeah. hated it. I hated it because it was dangerous. I mean, uh, if there was gas against the building, you had to try to get that out of there before an explosion would happen. You know, things like that could happen. And it, it, it was, it was tricky, you know? I mean, I was pretty good at finding where the gas leaks were, but um, still, it was still scary. And sometimes you get caught out into bad neighborhoods like 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, you would get called in the middle of the night that you'd have to go to go to a, 
a, a work site? Yeah, yeah, go to a work site. Um, you know, so you never knew what was going to happen to you because there was a couple areas around here that were pretty bad. And that just depended on if I was filling in for a particular person, you know. But um, I, I hated that part of the job. I mean, none of it was easy, that's for sure. I ended up getting sick. The one, one guy came into the office when I was filling in, and he says, how does it feel that nobody likes you? Ugh. Well, I just fell apart. I mean, I just got such a stomach ache that I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, yeah. it just hit me so hard because I'm trying so hard to be good at what I was doing. <laughs> And I thought, well, isn't that nice? Oh, but you're dealing with so many egotistical people. Oh, and they're all men. So I was. Yeah, in I know. But yeah. Were you? But there was there any other women? I mean, they're mostly men. But was there any other women? Well, there was just one. Ugh. She and she. See, and the thing I liked about my one of the things I liked about my job was it was all mostly all women, mostly all women. You know, oh yeah. Women yeah. teachers. But mm -hmm. the administrators were mostly all men. <laughs> yes. Yeah, those bigger jobs, it's usually the men, you know. Yeah, like, but, and, but and, more and more women were getting in there. Uh -huh. it, it could have been 50, 50%. I'm trying to think because more and more women were get in there. As time went on, there's more and more women getting in those administrative jobs. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Yep. Here, there's still a lot of um, men in the school board you know, like the school, like super, super uh, and stuff. There's not any women in the school yeah. board and school, school board? board. Yes. There was women in school boards. I had covered a few uh, areas. And we've had, we've had uh, about two different women that have been superintendents. I think two, maybe, maybe it might've only been one time, but I thought maybe two times, I think, yes, two times we've had, two superintendents that have been women. Is that right? Yeah. Mostly what men, but we did have two times women superintendents. Well, that's nice. That's yeah. nice. You know, you'd like to hear that, you know, mm -hmm. um, women getting into, see in the, in the gas industry, there was not many women in the upper, in the upper yeah. uh, management. It was all men they didn't like the fact that women were in any of those jobs. And I think that that was why I was getting harassed so much too. Because, yeah. That's probably why. I mean, I was just trying to take care of my family, you know, at the time, cause I was divorced and you know, I, when did you start painting? Well, um, let's see. I, I always did. I, I was 11 when I first started. <clears throat> yes. And it was an off and on process, you know, and uh, when I was in college, I took, up a, a lot of uh, art classes, but I I only needed one more uh, class to have it as a minor. But yeah. I wanted to, oh, you're just one mi one class, short. one class less of short of a minor. Yeah. Ah. So, but you know what? I took some classes at the community college here. Like, uh, I I bet I have like nine credits in art. Mm -hmm. So I figured now I have my minor, even though it's not written on my, yeah. my uh, you know. And your major was what? My major was business. Oh, okay. And then uh, I went to a Catholic college. So my, uh, my minor actually ended up theology. Oh, yeah. I remember, now I remember you talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Then I went on for my master's, which was public management. And it was, uh, I guess, information systems and um, marketing communications was part of it all. So that was, I liked that. I mean, I, it was hard, but I liked it. You like, what? what was the subject you liked? Well, I like the I like the uh, master's program. I liked it. Oh, I enjoyed it. Wait, oh, you got you have a graduate degree. You have a graduate degree. Yeah, in public management. Oh, public management. What? Oh, okay. Yeah, I have a master's. What's that public, public management? 
means pub like what is that public what's public management well it it was like being like uh you could take that for um in um education you could take it for nursing i kind of always wanted to get in, involved in like health care but i never got the opportunity uh, uh. Once i was in once i was in the gas industry it just seemed like that was it you know uh. so public management i don't know i mean i don't i think it's just basically working in public yeah. Yeah, oh, you could use it for different different fields. Yeah, yeah. Like I you mean, said, you could use it in education. You could have used it. You can use it in. You could use it in um, uh, nurt the health field. Yeah. So I mean, there was so many different people, and what was interesting is there was just so many people from all these different countries taking these classes, you know, and that was what was really impressive to me. You from know, all these different countries? Yeah. So I went to Carnegie Mellon for this. Oh, I remember. I remember I wanted, and when I was looking at colleges when I was in high school, that, that was one of the ones that I interested me because I think they yeah. have a good art program. Yeah, they do. They do. And um, that's Harrisburg or is that Pittsburgh? It was in Pittsburgh. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I just loved it. I just loved it. You loved your you loved your graduate program. I mean, yeah, the classes. The only one I didn't really care for was the statistics. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> I had to take. Yes, when I was, yes, I took educational administration. After I started teaching, I thought, well, what do I want to get my sec? Because I already had a master's in education. When and then I thought, well, what do I I'm like? I want to get another ma a graduate degree. And then I, I did take several many classes in um, educational administration and, and and then also and also educational educational psychology because I was thinking of becoming a school psychologist and and I had to, I did take statistics. Oh. It wasn't that bad. My worst class was an undergraduate and I had to take physics and I even had a tutor in physics and I still failed it. Oh really? Even though I had a tutor. I got a D or an F even though I had a tutor. Oh, that sounds and like and this was just undergraduate general general stuff because I was an art major, but I took I just I had to take some sciences and I loved yeah. biology. I did well in biology. I took geology. I did okay on I did well in that. But then I took I said, okay, let me take physics. And I'm like, oh my God, I bombed in it. Yeah. Sometimes it's just so hard. Certain <laughs> classes, you know. You just uh it was mind boggling. I'm like Yeah. They're they're tough. I mean, just like, not for me. Just not for me. I know it's for some people, but not for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how I feel about certain things too. I mean, they're just not for me. I I mean, most of the classes that I took, that statistics class was the hardest because it was like the statistics that I had was very easy, and then I went and did that there. At Carnegie yeah. Mellon, and it was all about crime stuff. And like, once we came to the conclusion of like what what we were doing there, I I can't even remember. We had to explain it. Well, in my class, we never had to explain it. You know, like what did it mean? Yeah, that that must be in higher level statistics. Is it educational psychology? That it was like a one point five credit class. So I'm oh, sure wow. that was a that was an that was a watered down version of of the real statistics. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. See, that's that's what I say. This was like when I took these statistics, it was like really a lot of fun. I enjoyed it, but this thing, I couldn't figure out what it meant. Like after you got your, you know, answer. Let's see. We uh, oh hello, the American Wanderer and Mar Marie. Maria Cervantes, Maria Cervantes. Hello, you guys. Welcome. And the American Wanderer is, uh, oh yes, a new friend who from Tuber Chat. And oh. he, yeah, you should go to Tuber Chat. You could meet a lot of new friends for your channel. Maybe I should start going back yeah, there. Again. So, yes, I meet a lot of new friends for my channel through Tuber Chat. Actually, that's where most of my new friends come from. Is oh, okay. Yeah, I go there. I well, he. 
he get, does live streams four times a week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And I used to go like all four of those days. Then I would go three of those days. And then last week it was like the first time I missed every day. I didn't even go at all, but I'm gonna, I got to go back this weekend. Uh -huh. But the American Wanderer, he's an R, he lives in an RV. Oh, really? Oh, wow. What state are you in now, American Wanderer? What state are you living in now? Oh, he's been, he says, I'm not sure this is creative, but I've been a sign maker all my adult life. Oh, what kind of signs? What kind of signs are you been making? Oh, and Maria asked, how's everybody doing today? Well, um, Mary's had a stressful day. Yes. I've, I've had like my, well, I've been dealing with the heat. The heat's like horrible. Because we were waiting for the UPS guy, so we, we kept our doors open and we didn't have the air conditioning on, so the heat was coming in the house, and I hate that because yeah. we were we did not miss, we did not want to miss the UPS guy because we had to sign for this expensive thing that I got to help with my vision disability. It's a thing I got. I'll tell people about it later. Oh. And we had to and you had they had to get a signature. And my husband was telling me those UPS guys they'll just ring your bell and run. It's like he had to actually call out this guy, say, wait, wait, I'm going to sign for it. Like, they'll just ring your bell and run. It's like, yeah, we took, up you have signs. To we took up signs. We had the doors open saying, we're here. We're here. We're going to sign. We want to get the thing. <laughs> so oh. we're meeting all day long, all day long. Finally, the, the person comes, like, before I, got, I came on here, about 5 o'clock, 5.30, 5.30, the UPS guy finally showed up. Oh, you're kidding. So we could sign for it. All that time. Yeah, we, we had no idea when the, the, the guy was going to come. Like, the UPS used to show up at 10 a.m. in the morning. Like the, my like Michael said, it used to show up at 10. But now they don't show up at 10 in the morning anymore. And we, we just knew that by tracking, like, we were able to track it. And they said, well, at the latest, 7 p.m. And they finally they showed up at 5.30 p.m. Oh, my. So we, we had to have the hot air in the house all day long because we had to keep it open for to because we we're waiting for the UPS guy all day. And uh, well that's kind of stressful. Brett Paul finds it for the soul. He's my co host on every Sunday the, I mean not every Sunday, the first Sunday of every month, which is this Sunday coming off, August first. And and um we're having a YouTube blind community discussion on my channel. My and that's my co host. Paul's blind through for the soul. Oh, nice. Hi, positive vibes. How you doing, positive vibes? Nice. Let's see, American Wanderer, tell us where you're at right now. What? Because you you live in your RV, so where are you at right now? Oh, here he goes. I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina. Nice. With the summer. And then out to Quartzsite, Arizona Desert in October. Oh. Wow. See, that's what I would love to be able to do is get a Winnebago and just go all over the place. Just yeah, just we, we talked about it, but we, we can't, we can live with such small amounts of, you can't hardly have any belongings with you at all. And no, that would be really hard for us. It would be really hard for us. Yeah, probably me too. <laughs> because, I mean, my uh, art stuff would fit in the whole thing. <laughs> Yeah, so. I took all my art stuff. <laughs> Maybe like as long as you have a home base, and then sometimes you go out like on in your um, RV. Like maybe that be for us. That might be the better way. But yeah, I think I have my two pieces done. Yeah, this oh, you have two pieces. Yeah, I did. I made two pieces. Um, I'm not sure what this is like a tulip, but. Uh, this is my backbone and how it hurts right here. Oh, nice. So that's where it hurts. And then I just did this little thing here that's just a scribbly thing. But, but wait a minute. Oh, but the red, orange, and yellow, the red reminds me of like that's where it would hurt right there. But that's yeah, not that's where that. it hurts right there. Oh, that's your second one. Yeah. This one here is just. Well, probably if you were looking into it, I guess, because it all Which, surrounds. So I could I could say that this was one of them, too. This is like the pain of it all, too. But this is more of the backbone. 
She oh yes, yeah, she painted her prompt. The prompt she chose was pain, and that's cool. Yeah, that that's really neat, huh? It looks like a flower. That's awesome. You painted about your pain now. Yeah. That so was one of the prompts, everybody, that she chose from um, a website that I, I mean, a channel that I follow that is linked down below, which is um, um, Mindful Art Muse, which I was inspired for that for us to create meditative, mindful art. And we chose prompts. And mine was growth and transformation and made me think about a tree of life for growth and transformation. And Mary chose the prompt of pain. And did you pick a second prompt? Well, this was just, I, I, yeah, this was that meditative one. Um, oh, the watercolor doodle. Yeah. 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 This was more meditative, but it almost kind of looks like a painful picture yeah, too. Yeah. The red spot, the red, orange, and yellow could be the pain spot. Yeah. And that one is her second one she did right there is the one about pain. Pain. This is my backbone. It's all out, out of whack. Yeah. But she right, deal, Mary deals with a lot of chronic pain right now yeah we're hoping that she's gonna get some relief from it like in the month of august yes august 5th hopefully we uh get that epidural steroid epidural but i like your tree that's so pretty all the colors are so pretty thank you it almost looks like a face like looking up my you see a face in mine? Yeah, like so, a face of the side view looking up. Oh, I don't see that. Okay. That's yeah, like cool. The back. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's cute. It looks neat. You can make it uh, two different things. Like there's a nose, the forehead. That's cool. Whatever you see in it, that's cool. Yeah. So this looks like a spaceship, too. <laughs> I don't see the spaceship. Did somebody say that? No, I'm just Hi, Claymere. Claymere is here. Hi. Hi, Claymere and Positive Vibes. Hi. Paul's Blind Super the Soul. Are you, is anybody having extreme heat? We're having extreme heat here. We have in the 90s. We're in the 90s here. Where'd you go? Who? Oh. Grumpy. <laughs> My dog. This dog here. Her new dog that she adopted. She's a new, she's a new fur baby mother for a, a pup from Puerto Rico. She rescued a pup from Puerto Rico. Yeah. Hi, Clay Mayor. How are you guys? How are you holding up in the heat? Do you have, do you have extreme heat? Oh, wait a minute. Who's this? I, oh, so American Wanderer says, I do logo designs, magnetics, banners, vehicle graphics. Group vehicle graphics. I carry all my equipment and supplies on the road with me. Oh, yes, that's creative. He was like saying, oh, I wonder if that's creative. That's creative. What are you talking about? That's very creative. Nice. And that's you carry nice. it on the road with you. Awesome. So he, he can uh, put that all in his little, win do you have like a Winnebago or something? Is he the one that lives out of a... um? That lives out of a what was it? A, okay, American Wanderer. What, American Wanderer. What's what's the vehicle? The RV vehicle that you live in? Because I'm thinking, what is it? It's um. You converted something, American Wanderer. Do you convert some vehicle to be your vehicle that you live in? I seem to remember that you. Let me know. Let us know. What's yeah. The, what's your RV vehicle that you live in? Hey, yeah, that's it. A 15 passenger shuttle bus. He lives in a 15 passenger. Oh, shuttle bus. really? A 15 passenger shuttle bus. That and that's so creative too. You know. Yeah. That is very creative that you did that. That's pretty neat. I'm going to see what I can do with this piece here that I st started. Was that you started that earlier today? Well, I started this before. Uh, this was that paper that's handmade. 
Oh, you started this and didn't like it, right? I didn't like it. Yeah. So let me see if I can. But that that whole journal is made of handmade paper. Yes. It's a new I, journal. It's a new journal you're starting. Yes, it's a brand new journal. I wanted to see if it was better than the other one. You bought that and it's handmade paper. Yeah, it's um. I bought I bought this at Hobby Lobby. Oh, it was on sale. I bought this one and I got a smaller one. Um, I, I thought the smaller one, I would try to do some like. Oh, look at the cover. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that pretty? Look. Isn't that neat? It's leather. I don't think it's real. But it looks like leather. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. I think it's a pretty journal. I, I kind of wanted to see if I could work in it, you know, but I'm afraid now I don't know what I would be able to do in this thing. Well, you probably could work stuff. In, you could work in it if, and not with watercolor. You'd have to work on the regular. I mean, without the bare pages. I mean, but you you need to gesso it to work like with um acrylics. Yeah, I could probably work with acrylic in here. That's what I was thinking. Probably you can't do watercolors. Yeah, the watercolors. Uh, I mean, it dried and everything, but it just uh, got kind of rough looking. But I kind of like the roughness here because it kind of gives you a little bit more, um, like when you're doing these doodly things, gives you something to follow. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's say, oh God, let's say, American Water says he has a complete video series on his YouTube channel on how he tore it apart and put it back together. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. And blind, Paul's blind super the foot soul says same here. Ugh, same here. What? But the weather. Paul Paul's blind super the soul. Are you having high? Are you having uh, extreme weather? Extreme heat. I mean. Yeah. Well, it's extreme weather, really. I know, too. Extreme weather. It's extreme weather, whether it's extreme heat or extreme cold. Yeah. I don't, I don't like, I used to love summer so much because it meant that I, because it was a summer vacation from work and stuff. Uh -huh. And I used to love that about it. But, um, I don't like extreme heat. You can't do anything in extreme heat. Well, that's it. It's like extreme cold. You know, it's like, it's like extreme cold. You can't do yeah. much in extreme cold. Either. I like it if it's cool or it's warm. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, with the heat, I mean, I'm the same way. I like summer. But the extreme humidity, as I'm getting older, it's harder for me to handle. You know, you start to. I guess so. I yeah. guess I think it is because we went to the we went to the shore last week, and we were gonna we were it was in the right in the right in the middle of the afternoon, and we were walking on the boardwalk, and I'm like, I can't take this walking yeah. on the boardwalk in this extreme heat. Extreme. It was extreme, extremely hot. And I could be, I couldn't walk on the boardwalk for that long. Oh, yeah, it's it's it is. It's too hot. It's just so uncomfortable. Yes. I know. I just like cool or warm weather. Yeah. My favorite, the, <laughs> yes. the month the month that I love the better the best of the weather, September has the best weather. I've noticed that for year after year, like in the past few years. I just love the weather of September. It's beautiful. Yeah. True. That is so true. Um, the fall time, like right before, you know, like it, the mm -hmm. humidity goes away. Uh, you don't get that. I mean, you sometimes get those um, what Indian summers, but mm -hmm. I just, I, I feel so much happier though. I don't like fall, I mean, winter, cause it kind of drags me down. Yeah, I know, right? That's the only bad thing about winter. You start and to get that. Why does winter seem to drag on so long? It does. It does, doesn't it? And the warm, see, six months of the year, we are like in warm, hot weather. And then the other six months of the year, because we live in the same state. Mary and I live in the same state. But in the other six six months of the year is cool and cold. And that yeah. cold, I don't know why cold weather seems to drag on longer than warm and hot weather it does it just because like it just seems to take longer to get warmed up 
But on know? the other hand, now I'm thinking if I if I have if I have to live in extreme heat or cold, I do like to be able. To, I like it that you can just go in your house and you're warm. You're warm. Right. And like, yes, you can go in your house and you'd be cooler, but I don't know. <laughs> like, I just extreme temperatures, just period, just extreme, extreme heat, extreme cold is very hard to deal with. It is. It is. It definitely is. I mean, I, yeah, I don't like the cold. I don't like the snow. Oh, hi, Rosalie, Rosalie Benedicto Sheldon. She's an art, she's an art channel. Oh, okay. I, I Rosalie, she, um, she, well, she lives in the United States, but she's, she is, um, Filipino. And, oh, okay. But, and she's a really good art channel. Everybody oh. should check out her channel, Rosalie okay. Benedicto Sheldon. She's a really good art channel. And yes. so nice to see you, Rosalie. Nice to meet you, Rosalie. I like that name, Rosalie. Yeah. And the American Wanderer says, oh, he's there in North Carolina, and tomorrow their heat index is going to be 104. Oh, oh, God, in North Carolina, really? And oh, wow. Limited. Oh, yeah, but at least in North Carolina, they have uh, mild winters. Yeah. Oh, uh, he says, same as me. Paul says, same as me. Wait, there, He's in the 90s there. He lives in Illinois. Oh, Illinois, yeah, that, that gets some severe weather. How are you, Rosalie? How's your weather? Are you have extreme heat right now? Extreme weather. I just I think I like spring and spring and fall the best now. Yeah, I think that's probably you know because our temperatures have changed so much. You know, mm -hmm. oh, peak hurricane season starts next week. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Well, that affects the coast a lot. The most, it affects the coast, even though it's been, hurricanes get more inland now, more and more, but, yeah. Yeah. But for the most part, it affects the coast, the coastal regions the most. Right. Well, um, now it's raining where Rosalie lives every night. Wow. That's too bad it's not in the West. They need rain for those fires. Yeah. Uh, every night. What's it like during the day? Rosalie, what's it like during the day where you live? Raining every night? Uh Oh, that looks very floral, what you're doing. Yeah, it almost looks like a flower. Yeah. I think she actually that said is. something about that, didn't she? Like a little flower? or? Well, I'm sure. I guess she has. I'm sure she has, yeah. A little cross-hatching here. In the center. Okay, well, that turned out better than I expected because of the way the paper was and everything. Yeah, because yeah, what what drawing mediums are your favorite? Because you're going to probably have to draw on that, not, oh, unless you might do acrylic painting in that, right? That yeah, well, yeah, I could, or I could use pencil, but I don't know about that. I'm not really a, uh, you know, person that likes pencils either. Uh-huh. Um, I, I don't mind uh, doing like uh, graphite, things like that, you know, um, I don't mind that, but, uh, you know, colored pencils. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I really like Karen Dosh, the Karen Dosh um, Neo Colors, where, and they, they're like a, wa they're called a wax pastel, and then you color with them, and then they're water soluble, and then you hit them with water, and I really love they become so vibrant when you when you hit them with water. Yeah. Water on top of them. Yeah, that's what but, these are. 
I didn't use them today. I should. Oh put... my God! What do you got? A set of how many? Thirty. Thirty. Oh wow! Yeah. So I've had these for a while. That, you got you got to paint. You have to hit them with water. Yeah, this was before uh, they got expensive. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, they're pretty expensive now. I got these when they were pretty reasonable. All this stuff kind of went up, you know. Like when I started back at it, it was less expensive. But every year it keeps increasing, even the cheaper things, you know. Yeah. Well, let's see what happens here. I'm going to put a little purple in here. Just so, on. Lizzie, Paul says, when you are cold, you can put more clothes on, layers, yes. If yeah, layer you it are up. too hot and you are naked, you are screwed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you I don't go. Hot, you're naked, you're screwed. Yeah, I don't go around naked. <laughs> I don't do that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, oh, where Rosalia, she goes, it's crazy hot in the morning and then so and so humid and then at night it rains, pouring hard. Huh. Oh. That's what horrible. What state do you live in, Rosalie? What state? Ooh, look at how pretty that looks. Oh, I love I love Neo Colors. I mean, what are they? Yeah, Neo yeah, Colors Neo are part Colors. of their name. Karen Josh Neo Colors. I like their pastel too. Their pastel pencils. I, I don't know, but they have pencils? Yeah, they do. I, I haven't seen their pencils. Isn't it Karen Dosh uh, pastel pencils, I believe? They should have them because yeah. the thing is with the Karen Dosh wax pastels, you, you can't sharpen them. Right, you can't so sharpen them. It, I can understand they should have pencils. Yeah, they do have the pencils. I, I don't know if I have those handy. So I was using them a while back, too. I don't have them around here. I also have these ink tents. Um, I've never used them either. These are ink tents. Oh, um, I have ink tents too. I hardly ever use them. Yeah, yeah. I always forget that I have them. They're supposed to be pretty vibrant too. Oh, she and Rosalie says she lives in upstate New York. Oh, that's where my mother was is from. She's from upstate New York. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Upstate New York, they keep raining at night. Mm. Really? Oh. You know, you would think that it would be, um, you know, that, that, that it would be more west. It's too bad it's not more west. I feel bad for those people. Yeah, I don't know where my uh, pens have been over here somewhere. There's so much stuff. Oh, there Well, you guys, we had a bad storm that came through here on Wednesday. The worst storm that's ever been here in 25 years. And we have like four down trees and one tree caved in the roof of our shed. It's horrible. And, and, oh, goodness. We've had so much cleanup. I've had two days of cleanup that I, I had to help clean up with dragging limbs and logs to a pile, to a dump pile. And like, and we're hiring somebody to take care of two of the last two trees. And guess what? Taking care of trees, it's not hundreds of dollars. It's thousands of dollars just to take, take care of two trees. That's you don't awesome. know how expensive it is. Our property has so many trees on it. It's like a jungle. Like, and we already, there were two trees that were really bad. I mean, of many years ago, I mean, several years ago, we had to take care of two trees that were like, we had to take care of take care of two trees that probably you know would be a threat to our house thousands of dollars and now 
these two trees that are down that, that are cracked in half because they, we spotted they spotted a twister in our neighborhood and it's not hundreds of dollars just for two trees it's thousands that's awful well i made a mistake um the carandosh is a pencil that is also water soluble i believe these are soft super colors um and that's Karen Dosh too these are Karen Dosh, yeah they are um water soluble pencils oh. and the thing that i was talking about that i don't know why i thought this this is the bill of carb othellos these are the pencils the um pastel pencils and these are real nice these are very nice now i have not used too much of these pencils as far as color goes so let's see what we get because these are supposed to be water soluble also but those are karen dosh water water color water soluble colored pencils yeah pencils so let's see Hi, be yourself with Jane. Be yourself with Jane. Uh, I hope you join us this Sunday. I hope you join us this Sunday for uh, again. She came on panel last week. I mean, not last week, last month for the YouTube blind community. We're doing YouTube blind community live stream. Be yourself with Jane. She's part of the YouTube blind community. Nice. Scroll up, scroll up, and and then um, we're. So that you can set a reminder for this Sunday, this Sunday, 12 noon p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my channel, which I co-host with Paul's Blind Super the Soul. He's in here right now. And um, any we invite any and all people up on the panel to join in, in our discussion. Okay, I'm going to put this in again to, so you can set a reminder. How you doing? Be yourself with Jane. Oh, she says I will. Oh, you're gonna join us. Yay. So here we go. I'll put it up. so you can set a reminder. Let me put this in again. Well, that was a little experiment right there. That's what it's all about, a little experiment. Yeah, so just to see how it worked out. Yeah, I like that purple around there. Okay, I put in the link. Be yourself with Jane. You could click that link and set a reminder. Because YouTube is not always, um, they're not always um, reliable on on their notifications. So if you if you click this link and set a reminder, then um, that's much more reliable. For sure. It, it oh. will because it will put the reminder on your home page. What's going on with YouTube? Well, the thing is, the way I see it is that I got so many people that I've rung their bells, right? So, how do you... Uh, yeah, I don't get reminders. I don't know how you see them all. Yeah, I don't get those either. I don't get reminders. I, you know? I get notifications, but but I don't, I don't know how they're going to... You know, I don't know how to see the notifications of everybody, of everybody that I'm, I'm subscribed to yeah and i don't always see all the notifications so whenever i can see a set of reminder thing i always i always click the set of reminder thing yeah that's probably a better 
better way. Because I do have a lot of people that I follow. Um, and I'm constantly always refreshing people, too. I mean, I'm always looking at people more so, you know, like you just keep going with it. Yeah, I'm not going any further with this because it's going through the paper. Definitely we'll have to uh, have to just so this now that I know. I almost see a dog face in mine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god. This thing looks like a big eye, a big giant eye, and that looks like a little small a little bit smaller, like two different eyes that are on I mean on oh, even yeah. inside. And here's the nose right here. Yes. Yes. It's a dog face. I see a couple faces in there, for sure. But it's supposed to be a tree of life. Everybody's supposed to be a tree of life. This but, is nothing. <laughs> we won't even look at this. We won't deal with this one. But show your other one. But yeah, these are pain. This is my back pain, what I'm dealing with. And oh, I love how she painted about her pain. Because she yeah. followed a prompt called Pain, which was from Mindful Art Muse, which I've linked the ch her channel down below, Mindful Art Muse, which um, I did this inspired. We did this inspired by her channel of Mindful Art, Mindful Meditative Art. And this was just the meditation of art here. Oops, wait a minute. There we go. That was the watercolor doodle. Yeah, just the meditate meditation. This was med mm -hmm. this was just about the pain. Yeah. Ugh. So hopefully the next time I paint that, that'll be gone that red spot. <laughs> yeah. Get rid of the red spot there. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. We got some. Let me read these. Um, the use of chances. I don't follow everybody. I need to like your content, if not quarter your homepage. Blind guy, his wife, the life says, I was listening in here and there, and now that I'm back to look at things have come together really nicely. Thank you. Thank you. And I saw it, and then Jane says, I did see a tree until now. Now I see a snail. Oh, oh yeah, a snail. There you go. Well, I see the snail right here. Yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah, mine uh, isn't very deep. I didn't use very deep shades, very light. Um, that's my koi, um, koi paints. These these are Sakura Sakura Koi watercolors. But if you watched her video, the Mindful Art Muse, which I've linked down below, that we were inspired to do this by, she does not use very much vibrant colors, right? Does she? No, no, they are very pale. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. quite pale actually. So maybe you were kind of. Influenced kind of, by how she used color like that. Yeah, how she used her colors. Um, she used the lighter ones. So the, in this, in the blue one is where she, Mary, painted the watercolor first, and then did an ink pen drawing on top of it. Yeah. About the orange one is about pain, though. Is about your pain. This one here, uh, it was just kind of the meditative, but I think that I put this red in here just to signify pain. Yes, I think so. Yeah. I see that, yeah. Yeah, I put that in there. She had done something like that, too, where she put, like, a, a piece of blue strip in one of her, her yeah. paintings. Um, but I thought, well, you know, this kind of looks painful, too, <laughs> with the jaggedy edges and stuff. Yeah, yeah so... Just uh, kind of went with it. She uses a light purple around her paint paintings. 
I kind of put orange around this one because I thought it would look better with the, the colors that are here. Oh, hi, Jessica Hicks. Nice to see you. Hello, Jessica. Hi, guys. So thank you for joining us. Th thanks, Mary. It's so nice to see you and everybody. Yeah. Thank you, as always, for joining me on Tuesday. Oh, Please. yes. Yes. I'm, I'm so glad you get such a nice bunch of people in here. Thank you. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. nice to see everybody. A lot, a, nice, a lot of nice people come through here. It's nice. Yes. Yes. And That's good. So I think, wait a minute. Next Tuesday is August already. I know. Is that wait like a minute. next Tuesday is because next well, Sunday is the first. So next Tuesday would be the third. And you're right. having you're having a medical treat, a medical procedure on the fifth on the fifth. Yeah, the fourth I have to go for an echogram of my heart because they uh, my doctor heard a heart murmur. Oh, so I have to go for that. And then I go for on the fifth for the procedure and then on the 10th i have to take grumpy back to the vet <laughs> i'm gonna be like yeah. i'm gonna lose my mind <laughs> but i i mean i just can't wait to get this done because i i'm just hoping and i'm probably putting too much into it and then it won't do anything but i'm just hoping it gives me some relief i know i i really hope that it gives you gonna give you relief yeah, I mean, it's been horrible. You know, we, um, I, my older daughter and I went to um, an outlet. It's called Tanger Outlets. Um, she wanted to get some things. My, my grandson's birthday is coming up. So she wanted to get some clothes for him. And I got a couple things for his birthday. And we walked all over that place. And I'll tell you what, I am, I'm still suffering from that. I mean, it affects my legs. It's just ridiculous. Uh, and it's all because of this thing right here that's rubbing against this one. And there's like a, I should probably draw something out of that because there's like a um, nerve here that it's hitting. And it's causing all this to come down on the right side. All my right side is screwed up from that. And and you, you never, have you gone to a chiropractor? Years ago I did because they wouldn't do anything at that time you know it wasn't bad enough but now that it's going into my legs and other parts my foot you know they want to try to do something now i mean you have to you, you know you can't even get any medication to help you you just have to wait for it all to fall apart i mean i'm shifting my bones are shifting they're not even straight anymore you know up and down here it, it's just, you know, it's ridiculous. In your spine? You're talking yeah. about your spine? Yeah, that's all osteoporosis. It, that's caused by osteoporosis? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, while you can live your life, because when you get older, it's harder. <laughs> you can't live it like, you know, you want to. I have, a, I have an older friend who says, she says, Getting older is not for sissies. No, it's not the golden years. It's not the golden years. And I don't feel like my brain doesn't feel like I'm old. Or yeah. It's just my body that is feeling that way. You know, it's it's goofy. So. Uh, I hope and pray so much that this is going to give you relief on August 5th with the oh, thing you procedure you're going to get. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um. I hope and pray myself too. <laughs> I mean, if, it, if if I can at least get where I can walk a bit more, you know, because right now, I mean, I can't even walk. I can't exercise that, you know, like if I could get on the uh, treadmill or something, you know, it might help too. <clears throat> yeah. I can't, I can't even, I can't even walk up the street, like trying to take the dogs for a walk. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I should uh, take this with me and uh, give this to the doctor. And say, 
I want that red spot gone next <laughs> after I'm done with this. Yeah. That red spot got to be removed. <laughs> so. Yes. Okay, everybody, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mary, for thank joining you. us again. Thank you, Diane. I appreciate you yeah. having me here. I enjoy this. You know, one of the things that you do is you kind of help me get my uh, thinking going, you know, like with the different prompts that you've had and everything. Yeah. And I really enjoy that. It's okay. like making me come out of my like realistic whatever I do. Ah, okay. Like something other than realism. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's make, good. Yeah. Makes me become more creative, you know. That's this good. is something I plan on doing. I, I'm hoping to paint this. Oh, which one? This what here thing this? here. What you you're pointing to? This is a heron. And um, my husband's cousins took this picture. And I thought, wow, look at how pretty this thing is. Oh, that's a heron? Yeah. But it doesn't look like it's at the beach. Oh, no, that's right. Herons aren't herons are not beach birds, right? Well, they they can live by the water. So there there must be some water nearby. But I just love his his feathers and Yeah. You know, I, I thought it would be so Mary is a very good realistic painter, everybody. So, so this might be something I try in pastel. Oh, okay. So. All right, guys. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I kind of like went on and on, but I thought this That's was okay. pretty cool. That's so. okay. Yes, everybody. So, okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. You guys have a good week. Yeah. We'll see okay, you next bye, week. everybody. Stay cool in the heat. Yes. Everybody, we got to all stay cool in the heat. Stay cool. Exactly.